Tropical winter has arrived with a vengeance in some parts of Canada anyway, and sometimes we lag a bit behind in properly preparing our vehicles to deal with those we winter weather conditions. The result can be simply inconvenient and other times it can just be downright dangerous. Joining us for some timely advice on this is Peter Van Leer. He is a licensed mechanic and owner of Southern Alberta Auto Care located just outside of Lethbridge. Welcome to Bridge City News, Peter. Great to have you on today. Well, thank you very much and it's an honor to be able to do this. Oh, wonderful. Well, first thing that comes to mind with winter, obviously, is snow and ice, which is usually what reminds us that it might be a good idea to get some winter tires on our vehicles. But some drivers say that they're just fine with those all season tires. So can you maybe explain why winter tires are better than those all seasons? Well, let's talk about tires for a few moments then. Uh, of course, a good winter tire would be your best option, but there are some people that don't have an option to store summer tires in the winter or winter in the summer. So another option that's really good would be an all-weather tire. And one of the reasons being that a winter tire is three peak snow mountain rated so you can legally drive through the mountains. And if you don't have the three peak snow mountain rated tires, then you will need to either chain up or just avoid driving altogether. Uh, so the good option is an all-weather tire. Uh, we recommend that to a lot of customers, especially if they don't have the room for the storage. And uh, there's some really good brands and options out there these days. I'm not going to mention any names because I'm not advertising for anybody <laughs> in particular. Good idea. Um, so just curious, is there a difference then between all weather and all season? Are those two different things or are they kind of synonymous? Yes, the all season tire, it's a, a softer tire as well, but they're typically only rated for rain. They say they're a mud and snow tire, but they're not rated for the mountains. And I mean, some of the tires are geared more towards the winter and some geared more towards the touring side, which is a, a highway tire. But uh, my recommendation would be a winter or an all weather tire. Okay, great. Now, can you maybe explain why why those tires are better? Well, they're softer uh, material and uh, they'll grip. Uh, they got what they call siping on it, which is all the little grooves that are cut into the tire. And they're designed to grip the snow better. Now, of course, if you deal with an icy situation, you're better off with a studded winter tire, but that has its downsides as well, because when you're doing a lot of highway driving, even in the winter time, the highways are often dry and will wear the studs down faster than they're designed to. And uh, the siping is, uh, of course, good on snow, but not on ice necessarily. It does help, but you still got to drive cautiously and according to conditions. And of course, there's a there's a price tag when it with when we're talking, you know, attached to that uh, the winter tires or the extra set of tires. So, some people put on just two winter tires as opposed to four. Is that a good idea? Well, Maybe save some money. Never, that is never a good idea okay. because uh, the two winter tires will potentially call it, cause a control issue. Okay. For the reason that your winter tires are going to have much better traction ability and whatever the other tires are that you have will not. And you could spin out of control very easily and cause an accident or worse. Okay, so good to keep that in mind. That is a very bad idea. We always replace them in sets of four on a winter or an all weather tire. Okay, so what about tire pressure? Should we keep a bit, keep it a bit higher or lower for winter conditions? Well, the lower, lower tire pressure, of course, will give you a little better traction, but it's uh, highly recommended to, there's a rating on the side of each tire that says maximum PSI cold, which would be best rated at about room temperature. And it's better to keep your tires inflated at that. Now, as the temperatures get colder, sometimes people say, well, it looks like my tires are low. And that's simply because of the contraction of the air because of the cold. And then when they're hot, uh, they expand. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, freezing cold temperatures, not exactly a friend to starting your vehicle. So how do we know when it's time to get that battery replaced? 
Well, it's something that we can always do. Um, we can test the batteries, of course, for strength, but batteries are known to fail without warning. And they can do that one day, you'll start it up fine, and then next morning or so you'll go to start it and it won't do anything or it'll barely make a noise. Of course, with the cooler temperatures brought on, your battery power, uh, the available power to starting the vehicle is significantly less. So if you can get a battery warmer or a trickle charger on there, that'll be very advantageous because it keeps the temperature of the battery up a little higher. Mm -hmm. And of course, many drivers, especially in the, the, the the colder climates plug in uh, their engine block heater overnight to help for a better start in the morning. So any advice on how long this needs to be plugged in for or at what temperatures you should be doing this? Well, different vehicles will have a different block heater set up. So if you got a block heater set up that's uh, thermostatically controlled, you could leave it plugged in at all times. Otherwise, if you got a block heater that's rated for say 750, 850 watts or even 1200 watts, you can plug it in for about three hours before you leave. And you can get a timer that you can buy at any big store and uh, set, set it up so that if you know you're gonna be leaving uh, or what time you're going to be leaving, you can set it up three hours ahead of time. Uh, but there are other ones, lower wattage, typically in uh, some of the imports and uh, diesel imports that are only like 50 watts or 75 watts. And in that case, uh, they definitely won't warm up uh, if, you're, if you're like minus 20 or below that on time to be able to get a good start. So I would recommend those ones to stay plugged in. Okay, good advice there. Okay, so when it comes to jumper cables, something that's a good idea, obviously, to keep in your car, especially in these these this cold weather uh, so does it make a difference as to what kind of cables you have in your car well make sure you get ones uh, with a good amperage rating uh, good uh, heavier of course the the heavier the wire is the better the cable is and the, and the heavier duty the clamps are typically they'll say roughly what they're rated at uh, if you got a 400 amp clamp on the end of the cables, that's uh, uh, better or, or even higher than that. Uh, the cheaper dollar store cables, they don't seem to cut it, although I have seen some amazing things done with them. Wow. Okay. And also maybe explain how to properly boost a vehicle. Okay. So the best way to do that is uh, hook up your dead vehicle first doesn't matter in which order, positive or negative, but let's just go with the positive first, hook up the negative, then on your live vehicle. Now, the note there is some of these vehicles, you're better off to shut the vehicle off because you might end up blowing a computer up because they're sensitive to voltage surges. Uh, then on your live vehicle, you hook up the positive first and then Go away from the battery and hook up your negative cable to an alternate ground source, such as a alternator bracket or some kind of a uh, aluminum or steel metal bracket on the on the engine. Uh, if you hook up the positive cable, your last connection onto the battery on the live vehicle, there's a chance of explosion because there's sulfuric gases that form above the battery because that vehicle has been running and charging. And so if you get the oxygen and that sulfuric gas mixture just correct, uh, you don't want to uh, live to tell about that one. No, we definitely don't want any explosions, that's for sure. Okay, so Peter, how do we determine if our antifreeze level is at the proper level and if it's at the right mixture to prevent freezing at extreme temperatures? Well, there are simple uh, little tools called an antifreeze tester that you can purchase and you can test the strength of your antifreeze and because it's a clear plastic uh, little reservoir that the fluid gets sucked up into. There's a little squeeze ball on it and it will draw the fluid up into it. it. Has a little gauge on there that will tell you, there's a few varying designs of this tester, but it'll tell you how many degrees it is good for below zero. Uh, it's also got to be clean. It's also good to make sure that your um, different additives are up to par in the, in the antifreeze. So 
if you've gone past five years, typically it's good to drain as much out as you can and replenish it just to replenish the additives in your coolant. Okay, let's talk about wiper blades. Should vehicles have different wiper blades for winter? Not to mention, of course, windshield washer fluid. Very important. Great. Well, definitely. Uh, windshield washer fluid, we'll start with that. You definitely want to have the winter fluid in there. That's rated for about minus 40, 45. Uh, and make sure you do that while the weather's still warm because a lot of people put summer fluid or bug wash in there, which will freeze up and literally crack your uh, windshield washer fluid reservoir. And then some of those are not fun to change. I or bet. they are expensive. Yeah, for sure. Uh, windshield wipers, it's good to have a good winter wiper blade or a uh, monolithic blade, which is a, a blade that's got no extra hinges or anything on it. And because uh, otherwise it'll ice up and it'll uh, not contour your windshield correctly. Also, regarding wiper blades, make sure you break your windshield wipers loose before you start the vehicle because you could either strip out your mechanism, you could uh, break a wiper blade. There's a, there's a number of different things that can be hampered if you turn on the wipers without breaking them loose first. Really good advice here, Peter. I actually didn't even know that there were different types of washer fluids for different seasons. So thank you for that, definitely. And, awful, you know, we often also see people driving with iced up windshields and windows. So should we be checking our blower fans and defrost regularly? Well, one thing that happens, and it's often neglected as well, is the cabin air filter. Uh, a lot of most vehicles these days have them. And so the air gets filtered through the cabin air filter before it enters the cabin through the vents or defrost. And uh, being overlooked and collecting dust and different uh, debris from driving over the years, uh, it can hamper the amount of uh, air that's flowing through the vents. So that's one thing to check if your vehicle is equipped with. Typically, your fan will blow. The other thing is if it's not blowing, then you've got another problem, perhaps electrical. Either the fan motor is gone or you'll have a thing uh, that's called a resistor block that's gone. Some people will have just high speed only blowing and nothing in between or it won't blow at all. Just say I had a cabin air filter last week from a customer. Uh, the mice had been in there and had packed the thing full of wheat. So oh there was hardly any airflow through there whatsoever. Oh, wow. So check for mice in the wintertime as well. Uh, what about oil? We obviously get our oil changed any time of the year, but is there a certain type of engine oil that's adjusted for winter? Well, it used to be typically years ago that you had your 530 and your 1030 oil and you'd go to a 530 in the wintertime for a lot of vehicles. But these days you gotta be careful because engines are specifically designed for certain oils. Uh, you got the synthetic 020s in a lot of the import vehicles. Uh, there's still 530s available for some of your domestics, uh, 520 typically, and a lot of most of the Ford vehicles will use a 520 oil. Uh, it's better to stick with what it's designed for. And also, my advice by experience is if your vehicle is not designed for synthetic oil, stick with uh, just general, uh, with the regular oil or a synthetic blend of oil. Uh, synthetic oil does not have oil seal swelling properties in there, so you could end up with engine oil leaking. Okay, are there any other fluids uh, that are susceptible to trouble in the winter while we're on the topic of... Well, you always fluids? gotta look at all your fluids, your power steering fluid, check if there's any contamination, your brake fluid, check it for contamination. And if that's the case, have it flushed out. I do, however, not recommend engine flushes or engine cooling system flushes. Uh, you may end up with uh, bigger problems down the road. Uh, if you do the... The flushes, what happens is uh, when the engine was designed, everything is circulating one particular direction and uh, some debris gets trapped in behind certain areas. And if you start to flush it out uh, backwards and forwards, you break that debris loose and you could end up with things like head gasket leaks or uh, water pump leaks or other leaks. Mm -hmm. uh, we're almost out of time here, but any final tips on making sure our vehicles are up to snuff for winter? 
Well, definitely winterizing a vehicle is something not to be neglected. And uh, if you go to your mechanic and just do, ask him to do a winterizer inspection and uh, everything from tire pressures to fluids, again, windshield uh, wipers, uh, make sure everything is blowing good. Uh, and so also check your belts and hoses for cracks and leaks and yeah. Great. Peter, thanks so much. Great advice as well. Uh, Peter Van Leer is the owner of Southern Alberta Auto Care, located just outside of Lethbridge. I'm Jeanette Rocher. On behalf of all of us here at Bridge City News, thanks for watching.